Alrighty, hello everyone, I am back, and this time uh, with a little bit of a different challenge for myself. I'm at my favorite uh, disc golf course in the world. It's nine holes or, or less, <laughs> or thereabouts, and it's Cypress Wood. And uh, I'm going to uh, have a forehand only round here. I'm gonna do best throw because primarily I want to learn how to throw forehand or sidearm better, and uh, this is a great course to uh, test out my skills. So uh, let's go. Okay, here I am at hole one, and just to let you know, I've got basically my full bag with me, but considering I'm only limiting myself to sidearm and forehand drives off the tee and approaches for the most part, um, I'm only really gonna be using my putters and my mid-ranges. I've got four mid-ranges and five putters, and uh, that's what I'm going to use. So let me go ahead and do a couple drives. Since this is best throw, I'm gonna take the best two throws of any off the tee so oh you know what this is actually a driver let me try a driver off the tee this is my star leopard wow the grass has not been maintained so i better keep track of the discs that i throw all right that's actually pretty decent let me try something a little straighter a little bit better for my speed, this is a Star Mix Atlas. All right, that's gonna end up about where my Leopard was. All right, this is pretty impressive. Here's where my Atlas landed, and a bit further ahead is my Leopard. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw from here. All right, and you know, the cool thing about this is I'm about 200 feet away from that tee pad, which is about as far as I ever really get here with my main drive mostly because I shank most of my main drives. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try with the Atlas again to get close to the basket. I actually goosed it and went maybe 20 plus feet long. Uh, duh, I moved the camera and I forgot I was supposed to try a second throw. This was best throw, not one round. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. So let me try my Star Lion and go maybe a little bit less power. All right, a little less power, but a slight either late release and or Anheuser. So, whew, I forgot how tiring it was bringing all my stuff from a full bag with all the accoutrements I carry with it, like disc retrievers, etc., to the camera and the tripod and all that stuff. I'm actually wore out. I haven't, haven't even finished hole one. Wah. I forgot I'm supposed to try to do a best throw. I can only get a par with the best throw. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to drive with my Leopard. I'm so used to driving with mid-ranges that uh, I don't generally give this a, a second thought, but no time like the present. Ooh, that one's gonna be rough. It's gonna be around the corner, which is great, but really close to the trees. I think again, I'm gonna try with my Atlas, but try to aim it out a tiny bit more. <sighs> there we go. That's gonna be maybe not quite as far as the Leopard, but a better approach right out in the middle of the fairway. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of a devil's bargain. Both my Leopard and my Atlas over that way are the same distance from the tee pad and to the basket. They're basically parallel with each other halfway. So I'm gonna try a Mako attempting a straight shot this way from here. Then I'm gonna try another disc on that one. So let's see what I can do here. I, I turned it, unfortunately. All right, I'll have an easy up shot for a bogey from there, but that's not what I planned on. All right, so literally about 20 feet sideways is this. And I'm gonna to try to curve around that tree just to the left of the basket that you see is directly between me and this disc. So I'm gonna to have to try to aim between these two, see if it'll go through. Just like that. Please get around. Oh, <laughs> came just before it. So that's gonna be a long distance putt. Okay, yeah, this Mako is uh, 
a longer distance putt, so I'm going to go ahead and putt from the Rock X3. I will point out that anytime I'm inside the circle, I'm going to putt. I may elect to putt from outside the circle, somewhere in circle two, um, but pretty much outside of circle two, 66 feet or 20 meters, I'm going to try to do sidearm approaches just to get it close because I can't bank on a 70 foot or more putt in. Anyways, let's see what I can do. Oops. Stance, grip, line, rip. So I will say this, surprisingly, I'm doing about as good as I would do if with my backhand here because I always bogeys hole one and two playing backhand because of the way I throw. So I'm getting surprisingly good results from my drives and up shots. But then of course I am playing a best throw round. That said, you just take the first throws of everything that I've done. Still equates to a bogey for the first two holes. Actually, yeah, close enough. The second hole I, I bogeyed, I, I parred on the first putt. But anyways, that way, disc, star leopard. <clears throat> All right, well, that one's going to be fun. I'm going to have to use less hyzer. I've, I've picked flat discs that turn a little bit to help combat the risk of going in the bayou, but apparently I failed on that one. Wah. <laughs> there we go. That's closer to what I want. All right, let me go retrieve my leopard from the bayou. <laughs> All right, so one disc retrieval later with my uh, stick. Uh, now, I'm technically in circle two, so I could actually try to hyzer something, but in the spirit of this challenge and to avoid the ant bed, I'm going to put this mini down and I'm going to try sidearm. There we go. I like that second one. See, learning about hyzers. All right, so I can make it from this first throw, but the second throw is better, so I belabor the obvious. I'm going to go ahead and put this on top of where this disc landed so you can kind of see how close I got. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. Par. Okay, so now I'm back to trying to dial in using this leopard. Since I almost exclusively use mid ranges and less, I'm actually learning more about trying to implement the flippiest driver that I have into my game, my sidearm game. Look at that. I don't think I'm going to get better than that with my Innova Star Mako 3, but I'm going to try. One, two, three. Ah, I turned it just to too much, <laughs> but it still missed everything. That's crazy. All right, I'm a good 200 feet away from the tee pad, 80 feet or so to the basket, give or take, with the Mako 3, but my Star Leopard did significantly better. It's shorter, and it gives me the right flight path to try to hyzer uh, putter towards the basket. All right, so truth be told, my Mako 3 was about 180. This is about 200 from that tee, so... Anyways, let's see what I can do. I'm going to have to stretch out this way so I can see what's... Let's see. Let's see what I got. All right, it looks like what I have is an easy putt from this peg, but the AVR X3 was still pretty good. So this shows that the practice that I've been doing with my forehand has actually been helping. And really, that's what I want to try to do is be able to use this when I need the right flight path that maybe I can't do with my backhand. Let's go. Also, one thing I want to point out is, uh, you know, Sean's not uh, with me today due to his schedule, and it's going to rain the next several days in a row, it looks like, at least a few days in a row, so we may not have a, a chance to get around in, but I want to at least record a video, and I've been wanting to challenge myself with forehand for a while. So that's why this video is coming out today. That's not too bad. Let me try my Mako. Again, I'm basically relying on the straight discs to get me more distance. Ah, I turned it. I rolled the wrist slightly. 
So this went about 100 feet away from the tee pad. If I had thrown my Rock X3, that would have fought turn a little bit and would have gone a little bit farther, but not nearly as far as my Leopard. Generally speaking, the more glidey and unstable discs you throw for the amount of power you throw, providing it's not too much, the farther you can get compared to an overstable one. Now, I've got a couple options. I've got an Anheuser throw and I've got a Heiser throw. I'm trying to practice Heiser, but I think I will try one Anheuser throw. You may not be able to see the entire flight path. Here's my pig. Okay, I'll have a putt. That's probably better than I have a right <laughs> to be in terms of my throw. Now I'm going to try a hyzer, which admittedly the pig would be a better hyzer option for here. Ah, too low. That was what I wanted, but I, I needed to supply a little more power, a little more height. All right, here's my pig. I think you can see it on the camera. I've got a chance at a par here, which we'll see how that goes. I'm going to do a straddle stance since I've been practicing that. Let's go. Alrighty, I'm here at my nemesis hole with two attempts to try to go through these trees. Well, there's one. <laughs> there's a decent chance at an approach. Let's see if I can do the same with this. Ah, had a mosquito buzz in my ear. At least I got one through. All right, so that's one of the annoying things about disc golf, and I presume other sports as well, is a lot of times when you're mid throw or you're mid putt, and then like a mosquito buzzes your ear, or you can feel you're getting the yips, you don't get to really tell or react until after you've let go of the disc. So that's a real problem that I see others do. I've seen people trip and throw the disc, you know, and they weren't quick enough to tell that they needed to hold on to the disc and avoid falling. Anyways, I'm close enough to try a couple putts and I've got mosquitoes still all over the place. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I can't believe I was that close. <laughs> What? <laughs> Bloody mosquitoes. Don't get me wrong, both of these were still good putt attempts, but this close. Whew. All right, Nemesis Hole Part Two, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Here's the second menacing hole, and I'm actually gonna reverse things, whereas before I've been trying to get two good throws as good as I can. Here I'm gonna try one safe play with a Mako 3, and then I'm gonna try uh, more aggressive play with the Star Leopard. Oh, and of course I grip lock <laughs> the safe play. Now I've got to try that with this. Oh, and I grip lock that too, but at least it's in the fairway. Whew. So that's kind of cool. I just met someone named Ryan who's uh, going to check the channel out. He uh, just, uh, I'm letting him play through because he's obviously much quicker than I am and doesn't have to deal with this. <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of cool. I will uh, work on my up shots in just a moment. Alrighty, that was depressing. I spent 10 minutes looking for this disc in, and it ended up being stuck in that first tree at a level that was hard to see being dark. This being dark blue in the shadow and eye height like that. So, all right, now I'm going to try a couple attempts. <clears throat> Well, let me see. I'm so exhausted, guys. <laughs> there we go, that's close to what I wanted. If I'd thrown that with my Mako 3, it would have gone a little farther. Oh well. Whew. All right, we're actually close enough to try a couple backhand approaches, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of this challenge. So I'm going to put my mini down between the disc and there so I can get some room. I'm going to try a couple forehand approaches. I've basically ruled that I'm going to have to get a bogey on this hole because of how I performed off the tee. There we go. Easy, <laughs> easy four. All right, so I put that camera where this was at. Whew. I've got to hurry a little bit because there's a really large group behind me. 
and I'm getting to the point where I may hold them back and I don't want to do that and I also don't want to be behind them because it would take a while so trying to be quick all right so one mistake I think I was making was I was essentially trying to go safe and then aggressive instead of just trying for two good throws so I'm going to try for a good throw turned a little bit let me see if I can uh, throw a little bit straighter there we go that's what I want Where? <laughs> fun with, no problem fun with dogs all right so unfortunately my leopard went maybe 100 feet and my mako three maybe 150 I'm not optimistic but for me to do a forehand approach I need to try to do this I want to try to do straight to slide and slide in hyzer so straight hyzer and hyzer that was maybe too much anheuser Ooh, that's stuck in a tree I think uh, that said for some reason this won't go down any further I'll have to play around with this but unfortunately it's stuck but that's what I'm gonna have to use to get out of the tree I'm gonna have to use another unstable disc slight let me do straight to slight very slight anheuser ah darn it okay that's better all right I've got a very long distance putt <laughs> okay I got lucky this Mako 3 landed on the ground about 55 feet from the basket, but my Leopard 3 is a little bit closer. All right, so in my opinion, for a sidearm, a Mako 3 and a Leopard of similar weight plastic are about the same. I would say this gets you maybe a tiny bit more distance and it'll skip a little bit farther, but you get a slight bit more control with the Mako 3. Absolutely love these discs for someone they can shoot, they can throw maybe. 200 feet um, discs in the five to six speed category are great for example a DGA squall is half mid-range half uh, driver that would be a great example there's a lot of good discs out there that are slightly understable to straight that you can try all right now let me see what I can do to get this close to the basket oh. now I'm going to try to run it ah <laughs> too low <laughs> all right so both of these discs are just fine they're right next to the basket and here's another easy four Whew. all right so the distance of this quite frankly is greater than I can achieve if I get two perfect max distance sidearm throws they get me the perfect points I'm still gonna be like 30 40 feet away from the basket it's just too far that's what I'm going to see what I can do with this and I'll see what I can do with another disc oh, too much fade I'm gonna to have to either go with my Mako 3 or my FD I got to go with Mako 3 because the FD I'd have to Anheuser a little bit more and I don't think it would give me more distance There we go. That's as far as I can get a mid range. <laughs> oh, no, nah, that a little too low. That's about 180. Wah. All right. Unfortunately, I didn't even make it to 175 with this Mako. Uh, maybe 160. This made it about 200, but it was in a really bad position. I would have had to curve it around, and I, the, the distance equation was bad. So, anyways, we're going to try a couple side arms from here, see how far I can get. Whew. There we go. All right, that's a pretty decent spot. I'm going to, you know, let's try the FD. Got to live dangerously, right? Almost Anheuser. Oh, I turned it slightly trying to get that extra distance. <laughs> that said, it's almost next to my leopard. Huh. All right, so this FD was just 20 feet short of this. Had it not hit a tree. I could theoretically pass it up just a tiny bit, but it is what it is. Um, this is about 80 feet, 70 feet from the basket. So even though I can actually kind of reach it if I do a putt, I'm going to try the sidearm. 
Ah, oh, I yanked it. All right, let's see what I got. All right, well, unfortunately, I missed a good opportunity to get, opportunity to get close with this disc because I shanked it. I should have tried a couple fake out throws before I actually threw it and released the disc. So now I've got a chance to recover a bogey. Game over. Whew. All right, what can I say? That was an enjoyable round. I did really good until the last three holes and really I didn't do too bad in the last three. Um, I am still learning to do forehand. As you can tell, I really can't get past 200 feet. Whereas with my backhand, I can get anywhere between 250 to 300 based on a lot of variables, some that I can't really control. But uh, that's gonna do it. I really enjoyed this. I didn't hurt my arm at all. That's something I'm also trying to do is build tolerance. Just two months ago, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing a forehand only round, particularly a best throw round where you have to throw twice as many. So uh, pretty happy with my results. I do think I would, if I were to play just a hardcore round, no best throw, no mulligans, no nothing, no two off the tee, I would probably bogey every hole, maybe par one hole and double bogey one or two. So it's a good test of, I think, a novice disc golfer skill and I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.